Hi everyone, uh, my name is Yusuf Sisko and I'm the lead front end engineer at Harvey Nichols. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about our story of going headless. So um, this talk is a little bit like, is, it kind of touches on technical, it's a little bit more about actually our journey. Uh, so feel free to raise your hand anytime along the way and uh, to ask any questions. Um, and also a little bit of more context, I was on the team at the agency that built the website initially in 2013. So I've been on this Harvey Nichols website since 2013 and now I work in-house uh, to get it into a headless state. Um, so, starting off, uh, so a little bit of context about the website. We're on Magenta 113, if you remember that. Uh, we have three websites. We have UK, Hong Kong, and International. And I talked a lot about um, ripping out the Magenta front end and kind of like creating this like really beautiful default theme that was like your own thing, not using base, uh, base themes. And this was the website that caused me to think that. It was an absolute mess. There were so many inconsistencies in every single theme. And um, it, was, it was just a nightmare to work on, really. Um, and at the time, when we started this project, we were on dedicated hosting. So um, yeah, you know, not scalable, horrible. Um, we use two main services for our main thing. So there's Fred Hopper, which is our search and merchandising um, uh, service. We send it all of our product information. We get it all back using their API. Uh, there's like a 200 millisecond res uh, average response time, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, and obviously, they do search very, very well. And Fastly, if you don't know about it, um, it's basically varnish, but distributed and all over the world, which is amazing. So when we started building this website, the current website, uh, sorry, the old website, I guess, um, it was pegged as this like bespoke boutique store. It was supposed to have the best of Harvey Nichols and literally like just a really small selection of products. Um, and then we launched Marketplace and we launched International and we put a whole bunch of other features on and we had a, an explosive growth of inventory. So like at the time when we did this, we had the navigation, at, like the faceted navigation at the top, which was really great because, you know, screen sizes were small at the time. So we were like, oh, okay, we can use all that space for bigger imagery, except nobody else has it that way. Um, so why did we decide to take it headless? I mean, I feel like I've already made the case already, but so it, it took us forever to make changes. We had a separate desktop and mobile theme, and then obviously we had international and Hong Kong, so to four more themes. And we had our own base default theme, which was separate from the enterprise base default theme, which we based this on. So making a single change, you had to make it either like six or seven times, or it was just it was just a nightmare all around. Um, the average response time was around 500 to 600 milliseconds. And then on category pages and brand, category brand and search pages, it was 1.7 seconds. Like this was just totally fine and normal. Uh, and of course, we we're pegging a 30% growth year on year. So with this, with all of these things, it just wasn't, the solution was not fit for purpose at all. And we had two web boxes at Rackspace. So you couldn't scale, you couldn't scale for shit. And it was just that. The page response time was measured in actual seconds. So I feel like that was, that was basically the bulk of it. We also had um, really clunky UX. This whole like top faceted nav is really weird. This was the original design that we got. And obviously like it's really nice. You can probably filter by brands and you can search by the brand that you like. But actually we have about a thousand brands. It was nearly impossible to find a brand there. And because we had a thousand brands, it meant that any page anybody got was highly unlikely to be cached. So as soon as you filter by brand and a color, you're getting a fresh page that's taking 1.7 seconds. The whole thing wasn't responsive and the technology was really outdated. We were using PageTML templates, XML layout, you know, all the Magento, Magento things, very outdated. Um, and the new idea, sorry, this slide is a bit of a mess. Um, so we wanted to build a full JavaScript stack, like top to bottom, everything, not like Magento's current PWA offering. So we we're going to serve the catalog data from Fred Hopper. So uh, with their 200 millisecond response time, we thought, OK, this is good. We can just take that XML, transform it, give it back to the user. We're going to use the latest technology that we could get our hands on. It was supposed to be super fast, uh, performance budget from the beginning, and scalable and hosted on the cloud. Uh, we also wanted to incorporate a lot of like uh, fixes to some pain points that we had. So we wanted server-side rendered pages everywhere. Uh, none of that hash fragment stuff that we had, uh, you know, the Ajax loading spinner that just like takes forever to load. And we wanted to reduce the number of uh, page reloads. So when you're going from like women's all clothing dresses, um, on the old site, that was a full page refresh every single time. And I think cur currently Magento sites do that at the same time when you're navigating down a category tree. 
So we wanted to kill that, and we did. Um, we were going to, because we're using Fastly, uh, and it's quite advanced, it allows you to configure those varnish nodes using uh, VCL. So we're going to basically build uh, some functionality there to do routing between the Magento backend and our new Node.js backend. Um, who here has used the Magento APIs, like the native Magento APIs? Like, actually, raise your hands. Okay, yeah. That feels about right, because we thought we're going to roll out our own APIs, because those APIs are a bit weird. Uh, so we rolled out our own APIs for all the configuration that we have in Magento. Um, and then we're using, if you're not familiar with them, ESI tags are like hole punches, but for a varnish cache. Um, so we're going, to we're going to use that for the header and footer and all the shared stuff. That was going to stay in Magento. And when we were talking about this, it was supposed to be like a two-month project. Okay, great. We already have the data source. You know, it's Node.js. Everybody can pick it up really quick, and oh, it's going to be so wonderful. And we literally had no idea what we were in for. Um, so this is Fred Hopper. This is the beautiful interface they give us. This is this is back office. People don't really see this, um, but they use this. They use their their data, their response time to render this. So we're like, okay, cool. Well, if they can do it, we can do it, right? And these were the designs that we used to have, and we're like, okay, cool, we're just gonna put like a left-hand navigation on this, just like minor design tweaks, it's fine. We had this weird view, I don't know, and then the worst one of them, I don't know why anybody would wanna look at pictures of products, but really, really tiny. Um, so it's kind of weird, but we're like, okay, sure. And then we had search pages, which looked like this, kinda, and then brand pages, so you can, you know, uh, if you don't know Harvey Nichols, we're very brand focused, so everybody really likes to shop by their own brands, so you go to Balenciaga and then you look at all the Balenciaga things. Um, so we start building this project and we're like really optimistic and everything's really amazing. We're going through it, we're like, okay, based on these designs, it's great. We hand it off to the product team, we're like, just design the left-hand navigation. This is, this is kind of all we need here. Um, so we handed it off to the product team and then they came back with this and it was fully responsive, which is kind of great, which is really like the best thing ever. But we just had these beautiful new fully responsive sites halfway through the build. So we had to kind of like scrap any front end things we did and just kind of like re rework most of that. Um, when it came to actually picking the technology, we used obviously the latest stuff, React, Redux. Um, so React, I don't know, just having dependency injection on the front end was one of the greatest things ever. We've been talking about it in the back end for quite a while. So that it was really fresh seeing that here. Express.js, which I feel like is one of the most robust Node.js um, server platforms. Redis for cache, because we're all familiar with that. We use it on Magento already. Um, async gets its own little shout out because that library has saved our asses many times. Uh, we decided to use ES6, even though it was very, very new. It's like the new uh, syntax for JavaScript. And Babel and Webpack to make it all backwards compatible with old browsers. And um, much to our boss's disagreement, we had to come up with our own name because it's our own new platform, and we came up with Full Frontal, uh, or FF for short. Um, so we were, we're like just there, you know, talking to directors, and we're like, yeah, we're going to work on Full Frontal, and they're like, what? What is that? Why? Why are you? What? But um, yeah, so that's it's now shortened for FF, and we're fine. Um, so when we were doing the build, we had a brand new Fred Hopper integration, uh, and obviously a whole bunch of uh, Magento integrations. And sorry, I'm just going to skip through because I need to remember this. The full request, how the request actually ha happens. OK. So the page comes in from the browser. All we have is the URL. Uh, this was possibly one of the big pain points so when we were building this. So all we have is the URL. And we're like, OK, cool, we need to figure this out. So we have a URL key. It looks like a category. It's not a brand one. Brand one starts with brand. It looks like category. We take that to a Magento, and we go, OK, cool. What category ID is that? We get the category ID back. And then we're like, OK, cool. Form the Fred Hopper request. Send it to Fred Hopper. Uh, get back some XML, parse the XML, enrich the data with Harvey Nichols' own data, and then pass it to React so it can render it, and then eventually give it back to the customer. So it's like this whole thing. And it has, had to happen in milliseconds, like actual milliseconds. So the performance budget was quite high, um, and the solution was incredibly complicated. Um, so while we were doing the build, every single day we would find new features that nobody really knew existed on the site. Like you wanted to hide, I don't know, the word new in or runway off a product on certain categories only, but not everywhere. Like inconsistencies that you wouldn't believe of. And it was just like, it was so difficult trying to navigate this as well as actually running the project and figuring out if any of these random features that somebody built two years ago and requested by somebody who doesn't work at the company anymore are actually worth rebuilding. 
And although Fred Hopper itself is very well documented, the Fred Hopper Magento integration, however, was not very well documented. So we're finding bugs in the Magento integration that was built five years ago and having to replicate them so we can keep the functionality working, which was just a bit of a nightmare. And while we were doing all of this, we were setting up new servers on AWS, wonderful cloud, um, and figuring out how to run Node in production, which at the time I was just like, what? Everybody seems to have an opinion about this, and we're doing loads of research. And um, eventually we settled on system CTL, tried and set tested, everybody loves it. It's working in production now. Um, and eventually the project progressed enough for us to actually get to the point where we have the production hardware, we're gonna start doing some performance testing, which is like the best thing on a brand new platform. And um, the results were shocking. Uh, my job was actually on the line and they were abysmal. We were getting like downtime response times in, in the sky. It was just, it was absolutely horrific. Um, we had one, so we had one like Redis cache, cache node and we're looking at that and we're like, okay, cool. Why don't we start using the new Redis cluster um, thing? So that's really great. So we're like, okay, cool. This is a few weeks away from actually going live. So like, let's use the new Redis clusters. Okay, our client doesn't really support it. Let's rip that all out. Let's put this new client in. Let's completely rework how caching works for this a few weeks before go live. So now we're using Redis cluster and performance is a little bit better and we're like, actually, you know what? XML parsing, do you remember that XML parsing? is taking so, so, so long. So I do some benchmarking and some research and it turns out that the XML parser that I randomly picked six months ago was the worst performing on the market. So a week before production, I was ripping out the XML parser, changing the entire request flow because it didn't really fit in with any of my architectural ideas. And I was like, yeah, this doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. So let's, let's rework that too. Um, and it did. Also, it worked, it kind of it worked, it was good. So we have a new, much more performant XML parser. And um, then we actually got to go live. So the project took, took around six months end to end. We didn't have the whole team on it. We we're still doing bugs and features and that kind of stuff on the old site. Um, we also minimized the size of the go live by doing the ESI header and footer, moving that on Magento first, and then eventually um, launching with the new FF platform. And the actual, like, the actual thing was kind of a flick of a switch. It was really nice because we already had the production hardware for the Node platform already live. So we just had to go, okay, cool, fastly. Now you can route requests over to the new stuff. And that also ensured that our rollback strategy was really quick. We could just publish a new VCL. Things are all being routed to Magento. Um, it went really well. We had a few weeks of bug fixing, nothing production critical. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I remember this thing. So on the actual day of go live, um, I checked my horoscope in the morning and I'm not a superstitious person and I didn't understand why I did this, but it said something like, you shouldn't do whatever you've been working on for months, it's gonna go bad, but if you <laughs> don't do it, then it's gonna be fine. And I could probably fish out the image, but anyway, I literally messaged this to like, Slack and I was like, we're not, we're not launching today. And uh, <laughs> everybody was like, okay, sure, yeah. Everyone was like giving me weird looks, going like, why? Are you, since when do you check your horoscope? And I was like, yeah, well, this is a new thing now. Um, so yeah, and then when it actually came to the go live, the Fastly admin panel was like momentarily down, so we we're just like clicking refresh, going like, okay, when will this happen so I can go live? Um, but we went live eventually. And the results were absolutely astounding. Um, we noticed that in Google Analytics, we could see that people were using the listing pages a lot longer. They were navigating. They were interacting with the size facet, which was the least interacted with facet on the whole site. Nobody was ever filtering by size. And we saw people are actually using that now. They were staying on the listing pages for longer. They were going through to multiple pages, going down the category tree. Um, we saw a 31% uplift in conversion. So people clicking to, on a product um, on desktop and then 23 on mobile. And we had a solid 180, 180 millisecond response time, like on average, that was just solid throughout. And then w at peak, so when we're like running with really high number of customers, it got faster and I'm not 100% sure how, but it kind of happened and I'm like, okay, this is great. Um, so yeah, and so we launched in April and then we had our shopping party, which is one of our biggest shopping days of the year in May. Um, that went without a hitch. It was, it was perfect. And then we had the sale afterwards and that was also perfect. And this has been running live for a while. Um, 
yeah, so if you just go to the Harvey Nichols website and like search by search anything, you'll see the new pages. You go to a category, you'll see the new pages, and you'll just see how slick the new um, user experience is. Um, so what's next for us? Um, we're going to be we're currently redoing the navigation. It's actually in final stages. It's gone back to the design team so they can approve the final st stuff. We're redoing the home page. Also, everything is like fully responsive. And finally, we're redoing the product details page. Um, once we've kind of finished all of that off, we're going to be able to actually wrap up the website into a single page application, you know, the final ultimate dream. Um, and it's going to be fully hosted on the FF. And you only ever actually see Magento when you're on the basket page or on the checkout. You click add to basket, the Ajax request is Magento, everything else is Node. So um, yeah, that's been our story.